going on, everybody? This is Corbin, the Serpentine Skipwith, and I'm here with very special guest, Jay from Remains. How are you going? Good, man. Good. How are we all? Yeah, not too bad. Um, I'm so happy to have you with us. Um, I've been anticipating it since I got the um since I got the, since I got the opportunity. So I'm glad it's finally here. Sick. Um, all right. So the first thing I want to know is what was the process in making this Goliath of an album? Well, obviously writing the songs that probably over a year doing that. Um and just getting them ready. And I recorded all my drums with um, Chris from Malco, Modern Lift Studios. And we did that. I just did that separate. And it, uh, they're massive. Uh, the biggest drum sound I've had for any recording I've done. And um, did the bass separately as well. Like modern day recordings, everything's separate. You know, you don't really hang out too much. So we did Luke Walton did the bass, did Rowan's bass, and everything else was done by Joe Haley, Dan Tazzy. You may know him from Psychroptic, the guitarist. And he made it massive, did all the mixing, mastering, made it a great album that it, hopefully everyone enjoys, because I do. Yeah. Um, I've definitely heard it, and, um, yeah, it is a fantastic album, so I can't yes. wait for everyone else to hear it as well. You're right. Um, so I'm curious, um, maybe, maybe you have some insight on this. Do you know if, if the, the lyricism side of things was from anything like in particular, like any, like any thing you guys were going through at the time, any experiences or just like off the bat? Um, a lot of it's like strange serial killers, stuff from just from the news. Like there's a song about Ivan Malat. Um, some of the other there's a song that's just about there's a couple of songs just about us being brutal <laughs> and yeah and then just stories really I wrote a couple of the songs and was just based one of the songs I wrote lyrics for was just a bit of a love story about two people like cutting each other up and being in love while doing it <laughs> <laughs> wow that's Definitely a twist I've, twist I've never heard in a song before, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what kind of gets you guys into that mentality to write stuff like that? Is it a normal mentality for you guys or is it specifically studio mentality or? Oh, I just think it goes to the music. I don't. None of us are really that inclined to enjoy things like that. I think it just it gives it, you know, the right flavour for the music to have brutal lyrics. I mean, it's all a bit tongue-in-cheek too. We don't really take ourselves too seriously. I mean, that's where the grindcore side of us comes from. Joke around a bit, you know? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I was going to say, like, did you guys have a certain sound or aesthetic that you were going for on this record, specifically? Not, no, not really. I think it's just our sound. Like, each member's way of playing. Like, I've done other bands with guitar, the guitarist Dave, we did Fuck I'm Dead together. And it's a similar sound. It was just like, a, I think it's just a transition for him with his style from that and a lot of the music he listens to because he listens to a lot of, you know, like um, melodic black metal and stuff as well. And I'm more punk rock and grindcore personally in my drumming. And I think Rowan's, Bass, the bass playing sound is basically just tractor grind, you know, with a bit of death metal mixed in. And I think just the way it's all mixed together has come more of a death grind style of music. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because when I was listening to the album, I kind of got like a hardcore, like kind of a power violence vibe myself, like like a band like Nails, if you've ever heard of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's what I got, you know, intense... And it kind of leads on to the next topic I want to talk about, intense but short songs, just yeah. like how they do. Um, yeah. So what was the inspiration for, behind the length of the songs being so short? Well, I don't think it's not really an inspiration. I think it's just no mucking around, just, you know, no need to sit there on a riff for 10 hours. Just get it over and done with, keep people wanting more. Yeah. 
Um, more of the, that's, for me, that's the yeah, that's more of a grindcore aesthetic. You know, quick songs, no messing around. You know, chuck a few riffs in there. Don't sit on them for ages and just smash it out. Yeah, um, I'm curious. How did you guys end up coming together to form this band in the first place? Well, as a, well, we're all good friends for a start, and I was in, I've been I was playing I've been in a couple of bands with Dave before. And um, Tony played, did one of the. I was also in a band called The Kill, and Tony was did vocals in one of our albums. And obviously, we've known Rowan for a long time as well. So, I, re, I re, the original way it came together is I got a CD off of Dave of all the riffs. He said you should play drums on this, so it's going to be perfect. And then we asked Tony if he'd be keen, and he was keen. And then we we're obviously trying to get a bass player. And, we asked Rowan, even though he's generally a guitarist, and just start jamming and got it happening. Yeah, nice. Um, so throughout this album, was there any song in particular that you found maybe harder to perform or record than others? Hugh and Brodo. And why is that? Why was that so? Oh, it's, a, it's a funny riff, the timing to get it you know, to get us all together on it. But I think it's come together well, that song. But, yeah, it was a bit of a difficult song, especially the intro and the main riff when it comes in with the roll and everything. It's a bit crazy. So, but, yeah, we got it. No, you tapes. definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking love the um, the whole project. So, yeah, no complaints on my end. Um, awesome. But, you know, like it makes me think – as someone who's um, who's more on the journalist side, talking to someone obviously who's playing the instruments and making the music, how hard is it? Or um, from your perspective, how hard or easy is it for a band a band to come together creatively and just be on the same notes the whole time, make an album? Was there was there a lot of not arguments but disagreements about songs or how they should be played and whatnot? None, not not once. One. Just jailed. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, no arguments. Basically, we're all on the same page and had no dramas at all. Wow, that that's amazing. That's true, brotherhood. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, we're all you know we've been around for a long time and we're all good friends and just love the song. So it was just easy. There was no problem. There was no no disagreements. We just love it. So it worked really well. Oh, definitely. Um, would you say that you guys, or, you know, we'll just talk you for a second. Were you yeah. more like, as you know, to play the kind of music you play, were you more inspired by more, I mean, inspired, like, as in growing up or, you know, like in your, like in your adulthood, um, did you listen to more Australian bands or was it more US bands or international bands for you? Um, probably all, all different bands, you know, um, from a young, I, heard napalm i'm quite i'm 50 now so i heard napalm def playing when i was a teenager and you know i was instantly like mick harris crazy i love this drumming you know and i've stole a lot of i i, well, I stole a lot of his licks basically and made them my own but um you know i'm also inspired by like, i've loved always loved watching matt rizzo from blood duster when he was in blood duster pine and um, Murray from Captain Clean Off, Matt, Matt Skits, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. Terrorizer back in the day. Pete Sandoval's a machine, you know. So, yeah, all that. Loads of different bands. Well, you know, it's, it's good drummer, good blasting, good, you know, it doesn't have to be blast, just a good drummer. I get inspired. Yeah. You know, I find that, I find that interesting because for me personally, even though I've lived in Melbourne 16 years of my life now, um, yep. I've always been more into international band. I, for me, it's rare to find an, like an Aussie band besides the obvious ACDC and shit. Yeah, that really, it, that, that really sticks with me and, and um, you know turns my head. And when, you know when I heard this album, I was like, I can't believe this is done by an Australian. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like it's just unbelievable because it matches and in in most areas surpasses shit you hear internationally which which i grew up listening to i still listen to this day so it's a real it's a real um you know kudos to you guys for making such an aggressive sound that can compete with 
with any band around the world. Oh, cheers. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. No, nah, it's um truly amazing. Um, um I, like I definitely have it on replay. <laughs> it's uh, oh, cool. perfect. Um, so I'm curious, where did where did you guys decide on the band name Remains? Um, I can't really I'm trying to think who did it, who came up. I think Dave came up with it. Yeah, it was Dave who came up with it. And we we're like, yep, yeah, cool name. Let's just go with that. It's perfect. Wow. I I love your guys just gelling. Like, yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. Like, to me, this is unheard of. Such such gelling, like, off the bat. No arguments making the album. The name, the album, uh, the band name right away. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just because we're close mates and we're all a bit older. You know, we don't need any bullshit. We just get on with it and, you know, not, I don't always, you know, there's always something you don't agree on as much, but there's never been anything I'm not just totally hate. So you just, you know, you compromise. And we haven't really had to compromise that much because we've all just been on the same page mostly. So that's good. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, have you guys played any live to um, any live performances as remains? Yeah, we've done loads. Nice. So what's yeah. that like? What's the aesthetic like on stage for you guys when you play together? Well, no, it's usually Tony fires up the crowd, Tone Bone. It is with his behind his sunnies and spikes and hat. Try and get a bit of banter going, get them fired up. And yeah, it's usually good energy. Get the mosh pit headbang going. And just play as, you know, brutal as we can and make it sound as massive as we can. Nice. Usually smoke machines going and, you know, <laughs> when we, there was a show we played at the Bendigo Hotel and we set this fire alarm off because they had the smoke machine on too long. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, hell. <laughs> um, whereabouts in Melbourne are you? Nice. I'm in Dol- we're, we're all in, um, all around. I'm in, um, out in, I'm in the north, northwest oh. suburbs. So I'm in Cranbourne. Yeah, I'm in Diamond Creek. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just cool to talk to someone <laughs> from like Australia. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I deal with international bands the whole time. This is my first yeah, Australian cool. yeah. interview. So it, it's cool to have familiar, <laughs> like, yeah. same country. So it's really cool. Um, awesome. So, you know, this album will be out soon. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a hit. Tomorrow. I know, you know, as obviously among metal metalheads. So, do you guys have any idea? Like, like have you guys thought about what the what the consistency for albums will be in the future from this one? Like, uh, well, it's gonna be a big step to do another one just as good or bet try and be better. I haven't even thought about it yet. We're just trying to get through the first one. Um, are you, so what's so regarding this album, when you guys perform live after this album releases onwards, like, will you guys do like maybe album sets or are you going to just pick and choose or do certain songs? We haven't actually spoken about that pretty much. Well, everything we play is off the album. We haven't got anything extra. We don't do any covers or anything. So it's all songs off the album. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. And we do the we we start with the intro, yeah. so we normally walk out with to the intro of the album. But yeah, we're pretty yeah, playing all the songs off it. Nice. Maybe not yeah. in exactly the same order. That's it. Yeah, because it is interesting. Because you know, this is your big, your guys' big album release, and you know, like I've never personally been to a concert where they do the whole set. But I think in, I think because the songs are so badass and short and you know just um just perfect for a live setting yeah. i'd imagine yeah just play in order oh yeah definitely yeah um yeah that's you know like i said just the intensity in this album is unreal you know the only band that i've heard at least from australia that i think vaguely matches this and i haven't heard them in years so i don't know what they're like now is um they are just murder i don't know that band yeah um uh, Back in the day when I was in school, they yeah. were big. Um, 
and they brought that grindcore kind of energy to it. But you guys, it's just like when I was listening to it, I had this, you know, this energy, this real like this adrenaline, this rush in me. And I was just like, these guys are something special and I can just feel it. Awesome. Appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. No, nah, it's um, I'm just, you know, I'm like I'm always honest here in interviews and um, I can't lie when I hear a good album. Cool. Uh, so you said you did you say earlier that this whole album took what was it a year? Did you say years? Oh, uh, well, we it, from when we started playing live, I think before we recorded, it was probably about a year. And then we actually recorded about six months ago now. But we're just Spike Rock label in uh, who did it worldwide, they're from Italy. They wanted to wait because they had other releases. So that's why we had to wait till July. So it's coming out uh, worldwide through them, through Spike Rock tomorrow. And in Australia and New Zealand through the good folk at Disdain. So, yeah, tomorrow's the day. Very exciting. Oh, wow. Um, tomorrow, like Friday. Yeah, Friday the 15th. Uh, midnight Australian? Yep, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Nice. So then my time, midnight. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> fuck yeah. Because, you know, so many time zones I've got to deal with on a regular oh, yeah. basis. That's not Australian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it'd do your head in, I reckon, for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so it, did you guys, like, in between the record, the actual recording process, what, um, was it complicated to, like, to, to, to make time to get you guys all in the studio? Did you guys have stuff going on or personal stuff? or? Oh, things? no, I think just the way, oh, I think, no, it wasn't really. I, everyone just wanted, it was wanted to do, it's just a new way of recording, I think seem to be doing a lot of separate stuff. Yeah. It's the first time I've recorded like this, to be honest. Normally it's, you know, everyone's in, hanging out. But I think, you know, we're a bit older, we've got kids and stuff, so it does get a bit harder. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, thinking about this record and going like, you know, you guys seem like, and this is this is just based on, the album I've heard, but you guys seem like the kind of band that moving forward, I bet you guys, you, your guys' mentality, correct me if I'm wrong, is going to be like, fuck it, let's see, let's see if we can push this harder, more, uh, more, more, more brutal, more insane. I feel like you guys would take that kind of direction going oh, forward. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, I definitely will be. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I can't imagine how you'd, like, because this thing is, Literally, like, if anyone, like, I mean, for those who like the heavier, heavier shit, grindcore and whatnot, this is definitely up there. And um, so I can't imagine how you could push the ante. But, I, I, but I would assume as a band member, that's that's part of the the fun of being yeah. an artist, correct? It, it's that oh, pushing 100%. yourself. Hundred percent. Yeah. If you're not pushing yourself, you know, you might as well go play pop music or something. <laughs> um. Tell me, um, have you guys had any wild experiences live on stage? Uh, more about Tonebone being smashed on stage more than anything. <laughs> um, there was a show where our bass player, Rowan, was injured and we had to get We got a friend to come in and play and he just nailed it. And I remember that show, it got recorded as well. And yeah, Tone Bone was quite off his head that night. It's pretty funny. But we haven't played too many shows yet. So nothing too crazy has happened to us. I mean, we've played some cool shows. We've supported obituary and cattle decapitation wow. and revocation as well. <laughs> so, yeah. That's unreal. Yeah, um... and King Parrot, so, yeah. We're going to have a few big shows happening. No, so I'm, I'll definitely be on. there for that. Um, are you guys planning any, like, Melbourne, like, southeast type shows? Because I'll well, be there. Next, no, well, our next show is at the Old Bar, which is uh, on Friday the 20th of August. That's our launch. And then we're playing the week later at a fest in Geelong at the Barwon Club on the 27th. Nice. And then later in the year, we're going Cambridge, Sydney, more local shows, back to Sydney again for Brute Fest. 
because we're doing some shows with skeletal skeletal remains later in the year as well. So, yeah. I mean, I would love to go to one of your shows, meet you guys, and just like get like a a post like a one on one like like real life experience with you guys. Um, that would be sick. One day okay. when you're in Cranbourne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, cool. like a few more things I want to know is, do you guys have any any either live um, or studio traditions or rituals that you do before recording or playing? Uh, practice. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, nah, not really. Not for me. Just, learn, you know, I will focus as much as I can on the songs, you know, try and rehearse them as much as I can, listen to them a lot just to get them na- stuck in my head so they're stuck in there good and proper so I can do my best job personally. So that's probably about it for me. I can't say for anyone else. Yeah. They probably do the same thing, really. I've always, you know, I've always said this. I mean, I've always had this, I've always had this um, idea that that drummers must have the most technical job in the world because I see drummers play and I'm like, I couldn't even imagine trying to learn any drum pattern, let alone play the drums. Um, <laughs> so what's it like? I mean, because you're a drummer, obviously. What What's yeah. it like having to remember all those like all those notes and patterns it must be it must be insane oh no not really i don't know it's just in, it just gets embodied in your brain i think yeah you just you know every now and then you might forget something fuck it up and go oh just have a smile about it you know <laughs> but no not really it just seems to stick in there once i learn something it's in there like you know i can forget people's names that i've known forever and then, but I won't forget a song, how to play it. Yeah. Nice. That's so cool. I, I've always been jealous of drummers because it's just like, I watch them play and I'm like, I'm such a, I'm such a retard. All I can do is like, write. That, like I'm a journalist. I know how to write yeah. and do interviews, but like, yeah. as far as learning a skill, like a physical skill, I'm hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> so, ah, uh, fucking hell. Um, so, okay. The one thing I want to know from you is, if you were stranded on a desert island and you could only take one album with you for the rest of your life, what would that be? Oh, God, that's a good question. Um, you know what? It's probably not even a metal album. It's probably Huskadoo's Zen Arcade. <laughs> nice. <It's a> punk. <laughs> nice. Um, Nice. Well, you know, that's, yeah, that's all I've had to say for, for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Awesome. Um, I, Thanks for having me. Like, I had a great time talking to a fellow Aussie, even though even though I'm Kiwi, but still, living, this, <laughs> living in this country 16 years, it's so good to have someone in my time zone to talk to. So, Sick. it's great. Thanks, Steve. All right. Thank you again for your time. And once it's done, I will um, send it to you. And, yeah, hopefully you and your band enjoy it. Thank you very much. Cheers for having me. Oh, good. Have a good one. Sick.